Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at Le Chatelier's principle and positions of equilibrium. We're going to talk about what Le Chatelier's principle actually is and explain the effects it describes and look at how we can use it to predict how a position of equilibrium will shift when changes are made to a system that is at equilibrium. Equilibrium and equilibrium constants have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the principle, it is essential you are comfortable with dynamic equilibrium and what we mean by a position of equilibrium. A reversible reaction is one in which the reaction can proceed in both directions. Reactants can react to form products in what is called the forward reaction, and these products can also react to form the reactants in what is called the backwards or reverse reaction. In a closed system, reversible reactions reach dynamic equilibrium when the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are the same, meaning concentrations of all reactants and products remain constant. Positions of equilibrium describe how the concentrations of products compare to the concentrations of reactants in an equilibrium mixture. If there is a higher concentration of products compared to reactants, the position of equilibrium is said to lie to the right. If there is a higher concentration of reactants compared to products, position of equilibrium is said to lie to the left. Recap them, let's go. In the 19th century, a French chemist called Henri-Louis Le Chatelier observed that when a system at equilibrium has a change made to it, the system will adjust itself to counter the change made. This observation formed the basis of what we now call Le Chatelier's principle. There are slightly different ways it is written, but Le Chatelier's principle states that if a homogeneous system in equilibrium is subjected to a change, processes will occur which tend to counteract the change imposed. <laughs> it sounds much more confusing than it actually is. There are three key properties of a system at equilibrium that we can change. Concentrations of reactants or products, temperature and pressure. If, for example, we increase or decrease the concentration of a reactant, the position of equilibrium is said to move and get the concentration of the reactant back close to what it was before its concentration was changed. In a similar way, if we were to increase the temperature of an equilibrium system, the position of equilibrium is said to move and get the temperature back down close to what it was before we increased it. If temperature is decreased, position of equilibrium will move to increase the temperature back up again. Increase the pressure of a gaseous system at equilibrium and, surprise surprise, the position of equilibrium is said to move to decrease the pressure again. Likewise, decrease the pressure and the position of equilibrium will move to increase it again. In simple terms then, if a property of a system at equilibrium is changed, the position of equilibrium is said to move to try and do the opposite. It's a bit like a tug of war. If we pull one way, the position of equilibrium seems to move to try and pull back in the other direction. Le Chatelier's principle describes what is observed when changes are made to an equilibrium system. It doesn't, however, explain why. And thinking that a position of equilibrium is trying to change is, well, a bit misleading. Positions of equilibrium aren't trying to do anything. Why then does it look like this happens? And why is it important enough to have to study? Remember that it is the rates of the forward and reverse reactions that determine whether a system is at dynamic equilibrium. The rates of both must be the same. If for a system already at equilibrium, the rate of either the forward or reverse reaction is changed, the system would no longer be at equilibrium. And there would be a short period of time where one reaction is happening faster than the other. Eventually, if left long enough, the faster rate would slow down and the two rates would become equal again, and dynamic equilibrium would be reached once more. 
For example, let's look at an equilibrium system between hydrogen, iodine and hydrogen iodide. In this system, let's say there is one mole of hydrogen, one mole of iodine and five moles of hydrogen iodide. As the system is at equilibrium, the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions are the same, meaning these values don't change. Now, say we increase the concentration of hydrogen and iodine in the mixture by adding in another mole of each. Now, there would be two moles of hydrogen and two moles of iodine in the mixture. The rate of a reaction is based on the concentrations of reactants. If we increase the number of moles of hydrogen and iodine then, the rate of the reaction between hydrogen and iodine will increase as a result, the forward reaction in this case. We haven't changed the number of moles of hydrogen iodide however, meaning the rate of the reverse or backward reaction remains the same as before. The rates of the forward and reverse reactions then are no longer the same. We've broken the dynamic equilibrium. For a short period of time, the forward reaction occurs at a faster rate than the reverse reaction. A new equilibrium will form as the reaction between the hydrogen and iodine starts to slow down as their concentrations decrease a little. Whilst at the same time, as more hydrogen iodide gets formed, the rate of the reverse reaction will start to increase slightly and bang! At a certain point, both the reaction rates become the same again and the system will have reached a new dynamic equilibrium. However, if we look at the amounts of hydrogen, iodine and hydrogen iodide now, there are no longer the two moles of hydrogen and iodine that there were immediately after the extra mole of each was added. Whilst reaching this new dynamic equilibrium, more hydrogen and iodine got converted into hydrogen iodide than hydrogen iodide got converted into hydrogen and iodine. This means the concentrations of hydrogen and iodine in the system decreased and the concentration of hydrogen iodide increased. Products increased in concentration, reactants decreased, meaning we say the position of equilibrium shifted to the right. Le Chatelier's principle, position of equilibrium moves to oppose a change made to a system at equilibrium. Hopefully that example shows you, however, that the reason this occurred is based solely on rates of reaction. Le Chatelier's principle isn't explaining what's going on at all, it's just describing the observation seen. The same idea can be observed for changes in temperature. According to Le Chatelier's principle, if we increase the temperature of a system at equilibrium, the position of equilibrium will move to do the opposite and decrease the temperature back down again. It's important to be able to understand why this happens, however. In a reversible reaction, apart from some very specific exceptions, one direction will be exothermic and the other endothermic. The direction that is exothermic will lead to an increase in the temperature of the system, as energy is released by reacting particles. The direction that is endothermic will lead to a decrease in the temperature of the system, as the same amount of energy is absorbed by reacting particles. Now, if the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions are the same, there will be no change in temperature, as whatever energy is given out by the exothermic direction will be cancelled out by the endothermic reaction absorbing that same amount of energy in the same amount of time. If, however, the temperature of the system is increased, the rates of the exothermic and endothermic reactions will be affected differently. The endothermic reaction rate will increase more than the exothermic reaction rate does. This will lead to an overall decrease in the temperature of the system, as more energy will be absorbed by reacting particles than will be released in the same amount of time. The rates of both reactions will eventually become the same again, as the endothermic reaction starts to slow down and a new dynamic equilibrium is reached. 
However, to get there, more of the endothermic reaction has had to happen compared to the exothermic reaction. And the concentration of products from the endothermic reaction will increase and the concentration of reactants decrease as a result. For example, let's look at hydrogen and iodine again. When writing out a reversible reaction, it is usual to put the enthalpy change for the forward direction on the right-hand side of the equation. Here we can see that the enthalpy change for the forward reaction is positive 26.5 kilojoules per mole. This also means then that the enthalpy change for the reverse reaction is negative 26.5 kilojoules per mole as whatever amount of energy is absorbed to make the products must also be released again to form the reactants. If we allowed the system to reach dynamic equilibrium and then increased the temperature, more of the endothermic reaction would happen. Remember Le Chatelier's principle. We increase the temperature, rate of endothermic reaction increases more than rate of exothermic reaction does and the temperature decreases back down again as a result. In this example, hydrogen and iodine will react together to produce hydrogen iodide faster than the hydrogen iodide reacts to form hydrogen and iodine. This will lead to an increase in the concentration of hydrogen iodide in the system and a decrease in the concentrations of hydrogen and iodine. Eventually, a new dynamic equilibrium will be established, but the concentrations of hydrogen, iodine and hydrogen iodide will now be different than before. For equilibrium systems involving gases, pressure can also be changed. When the pressure of a gas system at equilibrium is changed, the effect caused on the system is based on the number of moles of gas formed in the forward and reverse reactions. If both directions form equal moles of gas, change in pressure has no impact on the position of equilibrium. If, however, there are a different number of moles of gas on each side of the reaction equation, this means the rate of one of the reactions will be affected more than the rate of the other. For example, for the reversible reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen and ammonia, there are a different number of moles of gas on the left side of the equation to the right. On the left, there are four moles of gas molecules, one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. On the right, there are two moles of ammonia gas. Going from left to right, or the forward direction here, the number of moles of gas changes from four to two, a decrease in moles of gas. In a sealed container, if you decrease the number of moles of gas inside, you decrease the pressure. This means we can think of the forward direction here as leading to a decrease in pressure of the system. Going from right to left, or the reverse direction, the number of moles of gas changes from 2 to 4, an increase. In a sealed container, if you increase the number of moles of gas inside, you increase the pressure. This means we can think of the reverse direction here as leading to an increase in pressure of the system. If the pressure of a gas system is increased, the rate of the reaction that produces the fewest moles of gas will increase more than the rate of the other direction. We say the reaction direction that produces the fewest moles of gas is favoured. This means there will be a decrease in the overall moles of gas in the mixture, decrease in the pressure. In our example, this would mean more of the forward reaction happens, increasing the concentration of ammonia in the mixture and decreasing the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen. If the pressure of a system is decreased, the reaction that produces the most moles of gas will be favoured increasing the overall moles of gas in the mixture. This is because the rates of both directions will actually decrease. However, the rate of the reaction producing most moles of gas will decrease less than the other reaction does, meaning it ends up with the fastest rate of the two. Here, that would mean more of the reverse reaction happens to increase the moles of gas in the system back up again. 
the concentration of ammonia in the mixture would decrease and the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen would increase. One final point to note is that if a catalyst is added to a system at equilibrium, no change in the position of equilibrium occurs. This is because a catalyst would increase the rates of the forward and reverse reactions equally, meaning they would still be the same as each other, even if they are both faster than they were before. A catalyst can mean equilibrium is reached faster, but it has no impact on the position of equilibrium. So, to summarise, Le Chatelier's principle states that if a homogeneous system at equilibrium is subjected to a change, position of equilibrium will move to try and counteract that change. If the concentration of a reactant or product is increased, position of equilibrium will move to oppose the change and try and decrease the concentration again by favouring the reaction that will use it up as a reactant. If the concentration of a reactant or product is decreased, position of equilibrium will move to oppose the change and try and increase the concentration again by favouring the reaction that will make more of it. If the temperature of a system is increased, position of equilibrium will move to favour the endothermic reaction that will cause a decrease in temperature. If the temperature of a system is decreased, position of equilibrium will move to favour the exothermic reaction that will cause an increase in temperature. If the pressure of a gas system is increased, position of equilibrium will move to oppose the change and favour the reaction that produces the fewest moles of gas. If the pressure of a gas system is decreased, position of equilibrium will move to oppose the change and favour the reaction that produces the greatest moles of gas. Catalysts have no effect on positions of equilibrium, they increase the rates of forward and reverse reactions equally, just resulting in equilibrium being reached faster. I hope you found this video useful, please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.